operational until the time of slaughter. He also says the Tyrus will work well for farmers who have computers. We can use it without a computer system, but the real benefit comes into play uh, when it is linked in with electronic systems uh, that are becoming more popular for the producers. And uh, I think that ideally you'd want to be using this system in conjunction with automatic uh, tracking or inventory control. Tony Sabetti of Texas Instruments says the Tyrus system is still probably a year or so away as it awaits final regulatory approval. I'm Max Armstrong for U.S. Farm Report. Organization. He's a winner for the President's and Governor's Award for Design Excellence. And here to discuss with us his insights about end times, we welcome Dr. Carl Sanders. Thank you God after bless a you. busy weekend. I understand you were at Sacramento Trinity Church, four sessions over the weekend? Four sessions over the weekend. Praise God. What Thank kind God. of Praise intrigue God. and interest did you find in the people over the very subject that you're discussing? Well, I think we're finding people are excited about what's going on. They're excited about the times that we're living in. And it's not a downer, think, is it? No, it's not. Uh, you know, if you read the last chapter of the book, we win. That's right. Tell and me. I'm excited about that. So, uh, as we share with people, you know, God's people, it's exciting to see. And all through our message, we include the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's plunge right into it, Carl. It's a high-tech computer age in which we live. We know that there are some dramatic prophecies that talk about end times, what to expect. How do you see these bridging or merging or flowing together? Well, we see a, we see a, a, a vast amount of technology moving into the area uh, that fits right in with Scripture. And uh, a couple of these things I'll share with you. Uh, I, spent, I spent about six to seven years on a project to develop a small microchip this microchip, uh, we had begun the project to, to look at uh, uh, going around a spinal bypass in a young lady that had a severed spine and looking at, at being able to connect motor nerves mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. and this type of thing. Reader's Digest had an article about it. Uh, but out of this sprang a, a, a whole group of uh, biomed devices. And uh, so there were behavior modification microchips. Uh, uh, I, I refer to it as electronic acupuncture, but mm. what is happening is that a little microchip uh, emitting a signal has a certain effect on the body in certain areas. And so these things uh, came along, and, and all of a sudden we began to look at, at uh, uh, possibly an identification uh, type device. And uh, I want to say that in that group of engineers, and I, uh, I headed a team of about 100 men, in that group of engineers, I didn't. There wasn't an antichrist in the bunch. There wasn't anybody that came to work with a red underwear and a, and a long tail and horns on. We were just people doing a job. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, a lot of people look at the computer industry or look at computers as being uh, something evil about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there isn't anything really evil. I've been through the. I've designed a lot of microcircuits, a lot of the chips that are used in modern uh, mm -hmm. PCs. I've I've had uh, done a design work on. I didn't find the Antichrist in there any place. I didn't find the Holy Ghost either. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but they're a tool. User neutral, huh? They're a tool. And so, as this project went along and, and eventually became an identification microchip, and we're seeing now, uh, in fact, in the paper today, in your local paper, it talked about a microchip being inserted in cats and dogs, and this type of thing it was right on the front page next to <laughs> the article about Yeltsin. And so, and your what, people should go around saying, <laughs> "My dog has a microchip in yes. it. My cat has a microchip." Yes, praise God. Well, we're seeing, we're seeing it just come. And and what we're doing is sharing with people like a, like a frog in a pan of water as that water heats up. If if we it says my people perish for a lack of knowledge, and so what we want to do is share with people that these things are going on. The technology is there. We have twenty three satellites overhead that can read a postage stamp laying on a tennis court. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't realize this. Mm -hmm. uh, they can read your license plates every 19 minutes. Mm -hmm. The trucks going up and down the highway now are being tracked uh, through a microchip and a satellite system. So the dispatcher can call in and say, this truck's turning off, off ramp, such and such. You'll be at your, your dock in a few minutes. So Maybe they can follow my kids and keep an eye on my kids for me, huh? You know, we have a little microchip that we pass around in the, in the churches, and I tell people, don't take it home. We'll follow you. 
We'll find <laughs> it. Okay, but Carl, all, all of this, where where's it going? And and what about Bible prophecy? What it talks about happening in the end at times? What what's the correlation? Well, I think some interesting things that uh, that. Uh, uh, God put a call on my life to go and share this message some time ago, and I ran from him. And like Jonah, uh, uh, I just, I ran. I didn't want to do it. And uh, I had uh, the very people that I worked with uh, that I knew were people that I would be turning against if I, uh, if I divulged a lot of this information. I had received a lot of research and development grants, and I certainly didn't want to lose that track of, of that going on. And uh, so, I didn't want to. I didn't want to share the message. We got him, didn't we? We got him. Praise we even chasing a fly in this set, folks. We <laughs> yeah, just got him. I think God. we got I don't him. Know where he came from? Some kind of a strange bug. Any, any, Was that uh, a computer chip lying around? <laughs> I wanted to tell you about that. We're recording all, sending all this back. But uh, <laughs> so, but the the whole the whole thing that happens is as off. these things. <laughs> He's, he's persistent. Well, praise God, we've got a bug in the system. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> as these things began to, as, as, we, as I began to look at what was going on with, uh, with this microchip, uh, and I never had laid it up against Scripture before, mm -hmm. there came a time and, uh, when God put that call on my life, and, I, and in this running I looked, and I looked in Revelation 13, verse 16, and it says, He calls us all, both great and small, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And I had never really thought about that because I thought, well, some of the versions say on instead of in, and so maybe I'm not caught up in that. But I began to, begin to realize he pointed the word mark out. I looked it up in the, in the concordance in the Greek, and it was charagma. And the, the word charagma means to be cut into or placed into. I looked up also the word charax off of that which is incised into or placed into and i began to think about this i i thought my god what have we done have we developed something here that could possibly be that identification and we look at things like uh, the immigration control act of 1986 talks about uh that that it can be ordered whatever type of electronic media or invisible tattoo that the government deems necessary can be placed in and I and I, I, all of these things began to fall together. I remember when we were doing the project, we began to look for a place. The little microchip has 250,000 components. It has a little lithium battery. It has a recharging circuit so the battery can be charged. And I fought against lithium. I didn't want the lithium used at that time because of some bonding problems with, with the silicon. Uh, and uh, I lost out on that. And I think it's interesting that Scripture says that that he pours out a vial on those who receive the mark and they, and they, re they have a grievous sore. I asked a, a doctor who was an atheist, uh, who was at uh, Boston Medical Center, who was a part of the project, and he said, I said, what happens if that pure lithium breaks down? He said, mm. you'd get a sore, a grievous sore. And the Bible says sore, not sores, not anything else but a sore. And so I began to look at this. For those that have the mark, is God going to say zap and, and all those microchips pop open and everybody gets a sore mm -hmm. that has it? I believe we're in, we're in those times when the technology is, is pulling together all of the things. We have a unit that we can speak into in one language and it'll, it'll broadcast in 163 different languages and dialects. And uh, we have people jumping on this now. Uh, in fact, IBM ran an ad in the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about uh, we are reversing the Babel effect. Uh, Lockheed ran an ad say we're undoing the Babel effect. Uh, I think we need to look back and see why the Tower of Babel, why God confused the languages, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we look at this again. I believe the Antichrist is cunning, and he's going to use all these things to put together in the last days. But technology is, is interesting. It's fascinating. Well, clearly, it's, it's a, it is a dazzling technological moment of history. 